I'm Alan Cash. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work with a metabolite called oxaloacetate. You've probably heard about it in high school biology class. Uh, it's part of the Krebs cycle, and uh, it's of all the metabolites, it's one of the lowest in the Krebs cycle. Uh, so it acts as a regulatory molecule, and it's absolutely critical for energy formation. Now, Cornell University did a study on MECFS patients and uh, normal controls, and one of the things they found was that oxaloacetate was significantly lower in the blood plasma of MECFS patients. Uh, and we've done a lot of cellular and animal work in oxaloacetate and found some interesting things that may apply to MECFS patients, including we see a reduction of chronic inflammation uh, because of the NF-kappa-B pathway. Uh, that takes a uh, protein in the cytosol and transposes to the nucleus and then turns on the uh, cytokine uh, ex uh, cascade that helps with inflammation and, and, and healing. Well, oxaloacetate can turn down that, that uh, chronic infl inflammation by about 70% or, or somewhere in between there. Uh, we also see a reduction of the uh, Warburg effect. So Otto Warburg, who worked in this building, uh, saw glucose coming into the cell and he would um, then uh, see the, the, the glucose being fermented in the cytoplasm instead of being pushed to the mitochondria. Well, in the last five years, it's been shown that oxaloacetate in the cytosol can reverse the Warburg effect, which is really exciting. Uh, we also see an increase in the NAD to NADH ratio, which was uh, shown by Hans Krebs. And we see an increase in PGC1-alpha, which facilitates mitochondrial biosynthesis. So we're making more mitochondria. And lastly, we see an increase in cellular glucose uptake uh, not only in animal models, but in clinical trial in diabetics. So we're bringing in more glucose, we're directing it to the mitochondria, we're giving you more mitochondria, producing more energy, and then we're using less of that energy uh, for inflammation. So as a proof of concept trial, we had uh, 76 patients with MECFS, we tried three different doses of oxaloacetate, uh, 500 milligrams twice a day, 1,000 milligrams twice a day, and 1,000 milligrams three, th uh, three times a day. And uh, our patients averaged about 8.9 years of average illness, and they saw on average about a 33% reduction in uh, fatigue that was uh, highly significant at six weeks. So we followed that up with uh, two RCT uh, double-blinded placebo-controlled trials at the uh, Bateman Horn Center. And what we saw, we used uh, for the control, we used white rice flour because we're, we're uh, using this as a medical food in the United States. So we wanted to compare it with another food. And what we saw is the, uh, the control group quickly dropped off. Uh, it took about three months, though, to completely get rid of the, the uh, placebo effect. And whereas the oxaloacetate group uh, decreased uh, fatigue uh, anywhere from 27 to 35 percent, and it was all highly st statistically significant over baseline. Uh, we were almost uh, significant over placebo. We ended up at 0.057 which when you see that as a uh, designer of the trial, you go, ah shucks, or something like that. Um, this is a, uh, a four-year transform of the, uh, of the uh, fatigue scale uh, data. So the, uh, the vertical scale is the number of patients that have this particular uh, score, and what the score is, is it's the start of the study minus the, mi the end of the study, so how they've changed over three months. And this is just the control group, and what we see is, is most of the 
patients stayed the same. If they came in at, a, at five, they, they left at five or whatever. Some patients got better, not many. A lot of patients got worse, and this is, this is the crash that you want to always avoid. If we superimpose the oxaloacetate graph over that, what we see immediately is that a large portion of the patients, this is a 25% improvement line, so the, they're doing better than 25% improvement. It turns out that's 40% of the patients that tried this, and their average response was 63% reduction in fatigue. Now, we also see on this side of the graph, there's no crashing. So after three months, we're seeing no crashing in the oxaloacetate group as compared to the control group and this uh, enhanced responder group. And when we look at the number of patients in the enhanced responder group, we can see it's twice as many as the, uh, as the control group and it's statistically significant. So we also looked at cognitive function and we used the uh, uh, US Navy's uh, defense automated uh, neuro assessment uh, something, Dana, uh, for uh, uh, testing. Uh, this is a validated uh, test for uh, neurocognitive testing. And what we see in the baseline is it basically fluctuates around 0% change, uh, which is what we'd expect with right wife's right white rice flour, um, whereas the control group, or excuse me, the oxaloacetate group sees a highly significant improvement in cognitive function. And it's the entire group, it's not just an enhanced group, it's the entire group has, has uh, seen that improvement. Now we also ran a clinical trial in uh, long COVID, and with this uh, cognitive uh, function trial, we, again, uh, with the white rice flour, uh, we see about a 0% fluctuation from the uh, mean here. But with uh, oxaloacetate, we see significant improvements in cognitive function, reducing one of the, the, big, the big things in, in ME-CFS and long COVID, uh, brain fog. Now, because we're reversing the Warburg effect, that, that's kind of a big deal. We thought we should test this out in cancer uh, also. So we looked at, uh, we, we worked with uh, UCLA uh, in a, uh, a phase two clinical trial on women with breast cancer that had uh, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy or some combination thereof and had serious, serious chemo brain. And what we saw is, an well, you can't see what we saw. Uh, what we saw was uh, initially very, very he heavily uh, affected people. This is using the functional assessment of cancer therapy, cognitive function. And after four weeks, we see a huge jump. And after eight weeks, we've returned these women uh, a 26-point improvement, uh, highly significant to normal functioning. So it's not just MECFS, it's not just long COVID, it's a lot of these uh, physiological uh, chronic diseases that we're looking at. So in conclusion, oxaloacetate's well tolerated. We did see a small increase in uh, GERD type symptoms, uh, but it was very manageable. Um, we significantly uh, shifted energy to a lower, uh, to a lower or increased energy and essentially eliminate a crashing at the three month mark, uh, increasing quality of life. We significantly improve uh, cognitive function uh, in the entire group in both MECFS and long COVID. And 40% of the oxaloacetate group were enhanced responders with a 63% average improvement in fatigue. So based on this, uh, FDA allowed us a structure function claim, oxaloacetate may help alleviate physical and mental fatigue symptoms associated with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, MECFS. So this is the first 
medical food that is commercially available for the treatment of fatigue with ME-CFS patients. And I'm sure after hearing many of these presentations, we'll see many other uh, treatments coming online soon. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this talk. We have a lot of questions online, which I would like to point out first, if you allow. The first question would be, what is the correct doses, dosage of uh, oxaloacetate, um, which you would uh, recommend? It's the okay. first question, and um, maybe you answer that first. Because MECFS is a wide variety of, you know, from very mild to very, very severe, um, you'll want to work with your doctor for dosage, and that's one of the things, as a medical food, um, the doctor sets the uh, dosage level. We use dosage levels, we settled on dosage levels for our second uh, and third and fourth trial uh, of 2,000 milligrams a day of MEC uh, for MECFS and 1,000 milligrams a day for long COVID. But that's just a starting point, talk to your doctor. The next question is the price, actually, of oxaloacetate. A lot of patients are online and, um, and um, um, told us that it's highly impossible to get it for a reasonable price. Can you say something about prices? And um, Yes, I can. Um, certainly, this costs more than Flintstone gummies. Um, but there's a lot of research behind this, and this is uh, made in accordance with uh, drug quality type things. Um, and that's because we're also involved in drug trials for uh, cancer. Uh, we have uh, orphan drug designations for hepatocellular carcinoma and for glioblastoma, and a fast track designation from the US FDA for uh, glioblastoma. So the, the quality that you're getting here uh, is reflected partially in the price. Uh, it's going to cost, uh, but depending upon what your, your physician suggests, it can cost as little as $300 a month, but it could cost uh, uh, more than that. Common. Actually, that would have been my question too, because I, I think the concept has a very good rationale and, and your, your data is, is also um, uh, quite promising. Um, so if we would recommend it on a broader level. Could that influence the price? Because at oh, the absolutely. moment, it's, it's not affordable for most of the patients, and that's really a pity. Mm. You know, most of the cost in any new product is in advertising. And so if we gain acceptance of this product and it becomes larger and larger and larger instead of being a small niche product, um, yes, the cost will come down. Then let's let's tr make a trial in Germany. We get it much cheaper, and then you can see how broadly it will be used. <laughs> Feel free to email me, email me, email me and uh, we'll work out a deal. Yeah. Okay. Great. Mm. Um, to follow up on this uh, great talk, thanks, thanks a lot. What is the regulatory situation of your product in the European Union, if there is any? We don't know, um, and the reason we don't know is because medical foods, which is what this is classified as in the U.S., is not a regulatory category that's available in Europe. Um, oxaloacetate in general has been sold as a nutritional supplement in Europe for uh, since 2009, because uh, we were the ones who were selling it. Um, so we think it can be a nutritional supplement and, and be under that regulation. Uh, it's, it's not a drug anywhere yet, so, but we'll see. Uh, so we have agreed that I will be the bad cop in the session. So I'm the one who watches the time and that's why I would like to thank you for your talk and for the discussion.